This trip was a very important trip for us. It was number two of what we call last time apocalypse trip because we were just stuck in the boat during the COVID uh, lockdown. But now we had already some very nice data from last time. We published them already and we are just needing to go a bit further and need to go a bit further than what we already did. So we wanted to be more precise, more, uh, let's say, analytic on what will happen after the dive. So we wanted to see how the curve or the wave of bubble increase and, and decrease after the dive was just behaving and changing all over the reek of deep CCR dives. And we saw a real good tendency of those bubbles decreasing all over the, uh, the week. Increasing the first two days and then going down and reducing their numbers after even deep down. Another important question that we were asking ourselves for this trip was that actually we understand that there are two different ways to elicit bubbles. The first one is just supersaturation in micronuclei that are pre present in your bloodstream, actually your blood vessels, and that will produce bubbles. The second way of doing that is what we call nowadays second generation micronuclei. And those are inflammatory microparticles that are just uh, spread into your bloodstream because of the oxy-inflammation reactions. And this was also something we wanted to see, and that's why we were taking some other samples, saliva samples and urine samples. Nowadays, I cannot just tell you exactly what will happen because I'm waiting for the saliva and urine samples measurements, but this together with what we are, uh, we have right now can just explain us if it's more on the inflammatory side or more just in the micronuclear side that bubbles are just produced. On top of the bubbles, we also wanted to measure spirometry, how your respiratory system was coping with this intense stress of hyperoxia during diving. And that's why CCR was important for us, because with CCR, you keep a high level of PO2, and if something can happen, then we could see it. But the answer to this is nothing happened. Actually, not a real stress was significant or could be seen during those parametric measure measurements. So at the end of the story, even if there is a little change, it's not significant. And this is a good news for all of us.